pretty much everything in our lives involves some serious design. That's what keeps these folks employed. But nobody's perfect, right? With so many engineers and engineering professions across the globe, there are countless examples of engineering failures. Sometimes it's the engineer's fault, and others it's the people's building who are unable to read the plans properly. Human error is behind most of these next videos. But no matter who's to blame, there's a lot to learn from these major whoopsies. It may weeble, it may wobble, and it may even fall down. But nobody can deny these 15 world's craziest engineering fails. Morandi Bridge, the 1960s, saw significant growth for many industrialized countries, especially when it came to construction. As automobiles started to become more common across the globe, highway systems were needed to accommodate the increased traffic and desire for connectivity between places. Instead of having traffic meander up mountains as they had with horses and wagons, Genoa, Italy was designated as the area for a new, modern engineered bridge that would bypass the city and cross the Pocavera River in spectacular fashion. Designed by Ricardo Morandi, Morandi. The dubbed Morandi Bridge was transformed into a modern wonder, until eventually plaguing issues led to a devastating collapse and a need for a quick rebuild. As part of the A10 motorway, this bridge was a necessary structure for the new highway and served as an arterial roadway of Route E80 for easy travel between Italy and France. A unique challenge for its design was that the bridge had to be constructed over an existing city, making an already complex issue even worse. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. Have you ever seen a controlled demolition? It's quite a big way to create a huge mess, but you can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs, as they say. We can demolish a stone wall with a sledgehammer and some good old-fashioned human elbow grease, and we can easily level a five-story building using excavators, a crane, and a wrecking ball or two. But when you need to bring down a massive structure like this, you have to bring out the big guns. Explosive demolition is the preferred method for safely and efficiently demolishing larger structures. When a building is surrounded by other buildings, it may be necessary to implode the building, that is, make it collapse down to its footprint. Now, we can't say for sure if this is what we're looking at at this angle. Maybe it was an earthquake that brought these four structures down. Hopefully, it was not an engineering fail, because if it was, it was a major one. And as you can see, it's worth watching. Safely, of course. But what do you think? Have you ever seen or experienced a major engineering fail? Comment below with the hashtag Sweet Topic and start the conversation. Hyatt Regency Collapse in 1981, the Hyatt Regency Hotel was enjoying its second summer open to the public. The concrete sky bridges floating above the lobby were a stunning new architectural feature of the new 40-story hotel found in the middle of Missouri's largest city. Unfortunately, the marquee feature would also be the cause for its doom. After the collapse, investigators determined that a design issue contributed to the disaster. The elevated walkways were supported by rods connected to the atrium roof, but the second-floor walkway was connected to the fourth-floor walkway walkway, not the roof. That meant that the fourth floor walkway was taking double the load it was supposed to. The night a dance went on, the crowd grew in the lobby as well as the sky bridges where onlookers gathered to get a first ever look at such an architectural marvel and the events below. When everyone was partying, the second and fourth floor sky bridges started swaying moments before collapsing and crashing down into the lobby, killing and trapping people beneath the crumbled concrete. Bhopal Gas Tragedy In 1984, 40 tons of a toxic gas gushed from a factory and scorched the throats, eyes, and lives of thousands of people of the surrounding area. It's to this day considered one of the world's deadliest industrial disasters. For a time, this gas tragedy, as it would eventually become known, raised burning questions about how multinational companies and governments should respond when something like this ever happens. This incident was widely overlooked because shortly after it occurred, the Chernobyl nuclear accident stole the spotlight. You be forgiven for not of ever hearing of it. In the decades since, many other sites of industrial waste industries across the globe, including New Jersey, Missouri, and Ohio, have been cleaned up and reformed. Unfortunately, it took the horrendous incident here to spark renovation there. People continue to think of Bhopal's tragedy as one horrific night in 1984. The site still hosts hundreds of tons of contaminated waste. This disaster is in fact still unfolding. The explosion saw chemicals affect everyone around the area in unthinkable manners. 
Space Shuttle Challenger. On January 28, 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger lifted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida, with astronauts in tow on their way to becoming the first ordinary U.S. civilians to travel into space. Exactly 73 seconds later, hundreds below stared in disbelief as the shuttle exploded in a forking plume. Millions more observed the heart-wrenching tragedy on live television. There were no survivors. In the aftermath, President Ronald Reagan initiated a special commission to deduce what exactly went wrong with the launch and plan for a way into the future with corrective measures. The presidential commission was headed by former Secretary of State and included former astronaut Neil Armstrong and former test pilot Chuck Yeager. The investigation determined that the tragedy was caused by the failure of an O-ring seal in one of the two solid fuel rockets. It just goes to show how even the smallest of pieces matter when it comes to traveling to space. The elastic O-ring did not respond as expected because of the cold temperatures at launch time, which ignited a chain of events that resulted in the explosion. NASA didn't send astronauts into space for more than two years as they rethought and redesigned a number of safety features. <laughs> Hindenburg Airship the airship Hindenburg, the largest Zeppelin ever built, was the pride of Nazi Germany and was said to mark German engineering superiority over the rest of the world. Just imagine what was said after it burst into flames upon touching its mooring mast in Lakehurst, New Jersey, killing 36 passengers and crew members in 1937. The hydrogen-filled blimp carried a three-horsepower steam engine that powered a large propeller and flew at a speed of six miles per hour an incredible feat for the time. The rigid airship, often known as the Zeppelin, named after its innovator, Count Fernadan von Zeppelin, was developed by the Germans in the 19th century. Unlike many airships, their supposed superior German ships were constructed from a light framework of metal girders that protected a gas-filled interior. It was lifted by highly flammable hydrogen gas and vulnerable to explosion from even the tiniest of sparks. The ship was massive enough to carry a whopping amount of passengers. When the Hindenburg pulled into port, the metal frame scratched the metal port and sent sparks flying all over. Unfortunately, one of those made its way toward the hydrogen-filled interior and ignited it with ease. That was the end of the great Hindenburg and Zeppelin projects. <laughs> Ru Young in 1987, work began on the Runyang Hotel in Pyongyang, the North Korean capital. The hotel name translates to Capital of Willows, which was another one of the historical names for Pyongyang. The elaborate tower was to be over a thousand feet high, have 3,000 rooms, include amenities like a bowling alley, nightclub, and five revolving restaurants. It was also slated to open in 1989, but that obviously never happened. Although the building had managed to reach its full 1,080-foot height by 1992, that's where the majesty of this construction ends. Problems with materials and building methods had caused numerous delays, and international conflict stirred the pot even more. By that point, construction was estimated to have cost around $750 million, the equivalent of 2% of North Korea's GDP. Priorities, right? In 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed, and with it went North Korea's main trading partners and aides. Until then, the economies of North Korea and South Korea were fairly similar. It all went downhill from there. After the dissolving of the Soviet Union, the North fell into a severe economic crisis. From 1992 to 2008, the hotel stood, half finished, dominating Pyongyang's skyline. A stark reminder of how perceived prosperity can shift in an instant. <laughs> Lotus Complex Collapse It may be hard to believe your eyes, but you wouldn't be the first. An apartment building in Shanghai collapsed, but not in the manner you might first expect a collapsing building to look like. Instead, the whole thing is virtually intact, just on its side, after, well, seemingly falling over in the wind. Is this some sort of children toy building? The building was one of 11 13-story constructions taking place in the Lotus Riverside Complex, found in China's largest city. The crazy event occurred last June, killing one construction worker. According to an article from the Chinese news media, later investigations revealed that the weight of earth shifted from beneath the building for the purpose of constructing a garage. In this process, they dumped on a landfill area near a creek 30 meters away, which accidentally had led to the riverbank collapsing. As a result, water seeped under the building weakening its foundation without any knowing. The apartment building there ranged from 710 to 1,378 square feet in size. As you can imagine, the average price of apartments in the area plummeted. 
Deepwater Horizon The horrendous ocean accident, according to BP's September 2010 report, all started with a well-integrity failure that ignited a disastrous chain of events. This led to a loss of control of the pressure of the fluid in the well, which then erupted and eventually set fire. The blowout preventer, a device which should automatically seal the well in the event of such a loss, control failed to engage. Imagine that the safety precautions they say are in place aren't working. Hydrocarbons shot up the well at an uncontrollable rate and ignited in the atmosphere, causing a series of explosions on the rig. Eleven workers passed in the disaster. According to the final investigation report from the Deepwater Horizon Study Group, ten different techniques were used to try to plug the leak and prevent any more damage. This began with manual effort to close the blowout preventer with a remotely operated vehicle and by literally ramming it closed. Successive failed attempts involved things like capturing oil spewing from the riser by lowering a top hat over it or kill the well by injecting heavy mud into the blowout preventer. All of these efforts failed and couldn't stop it. Finally, engineers were successful by bolting a ceiling cap on top of the blowout preventer. This provided a temporary fix until engineers could pump heavy kill mud and cement into the well to reduce pressure. At this point, the damage had already been done, but at least they saved anyone else from getting injured or killed. <laughs> Chernobyl Acknowledged as one of the dirtiest examples of government cover-up and nuclear disaster in human history, the Chernobyl incident left scars on the planet and the human perspective of nuclear power to this day. When given the temperament and respect nuclear energy deserves, it can be life-changing. When profits and the needs of the few outweigh the needs of the many, then you get an incident like Chernobyl. The island is still so heavily radiated that it'll take around 20,000 years before it's expelled through radiation to be safe to human travel without protective gear. When this place will actually be livable again is another question entirely. That is all a guess, of course, as the aftermath of the incident won't be fully understood until the very last minute is observed, for never before had a, such a disaster befallen humanity. Since nature has begun to retake the land, it appears serene and hospitable. Unfortunately, it's not, and still practically glowing with radiation. The city is a husk of civilization. You can find homes, restaurants, pools, and cars still scattered about the city as if it were thriving. While they are safer than most power plants, the scratching fear at the back of everyone's mind will forever be that of the tragedy of Chernobyl. For three decades, lethal levels of nuclear radiation seeped into the land without humans capable of doing anything to stop it. Even the wildlife was smart enough to get out of town when this thing started leaking. Titanic The unsinkable Titanic was sunk by an iceberg, sure, but there are multiple facets that went into the tragedy that occurred a hundred years ago that incrementally heightened the tragic events. The worst part is most of them were avoidable mistakes. Even a century later, the case of the Titanic is case in point how technological failures often result from a succession of omissions, missteps, complacency, and bad luck rather than one big reason for the whole thing. That's to say, no one thing sent the Titanic crashing to the bottom of the North Atlantic. The ship was entangled in a perfect storm of circumstances that ultimately led to her doom. Such a chain is familiar to those who study disasters and is referred to in the science world as an event cascade. It's a fancy word for chain of events. The iceberg that the Titanic struck on its way from the Southampton to New York is number one on a top ten list of circumstances. Others include tides that sent the iceberg ship bound, warnings that went unheeded safety precaution that went unattended, and binoculars for the captain not operating properly. <laughs> Skylab Disaster The Amazing Skylab was a U.S. space station launched by NASA in 1973 and was manned by teams of astronauts in the same time. Its purpose was to collect as much data and images possible before being abandoned in space the following year. They only had enough resources for that time frame. At the time, NASA saw the adventure as wild success. However, in 1979, NASA observed the Skylab starting to break up and would eventually come hurtling back toward Earth. This terrified NASA as they had no way to control Skylab's trajectory, nor could they predict exactly where the pieces might land. Essentially, they had to warn the world to look out for falling debris. NASA and the world's media tracked its progress the entire time and it seemed like it could end up anywhere. In the early hours of July 12, 1979, Skylab finally crashed on Washington's southeast coast, scattering debris across goldfields. The event caused worldwide sensation. 
Today, the famous crashing event is a source of pride for people of the area. The crash essentially put the cities on the map, allowing for tourism to come and see the famous sites. It also didn't stop the Shire Council from having a little fun with the matter and digging at NASA for scattering space junk all over their humble town, sending them a $400 fine for littering for which they never paid. <laughs> Dubai Islands This is how the world looks like according to ambitious engineers in Dubai. But as you can see, it's starting to look a little ragged around the edges. The man-made archipelago was meant to cater to the rich and famous. From space, you can see just how marking it was on the planet. The space images show the World Island's development sitting in shallow waters just off Dubai's coast. When the project was launched in 2003, the rich nation was hoping for celebrities and the uber-rich to snag up 300 islands, which made up a map of the globe. Instead, the nation was left with a sagging project and billions in debt. Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt were reported to be thinking about buying Ethiopia, or at least the island that represented it here. A company called Nakil Properties created the foundations within five years, and from 11 billion cubic feet of sand and 47 million tons of rock, today it looks as though the project will never be completed. According to NASA's Earth Observatory website, Little to no infrastructure development of the world is apparent in this space photograph. The ocean is reclaiming the islands at an increased rate. Construction on the man-made lagoon stopped and the World Islands website went dark. The last update is from 2008, announcing the completion of the foundations. In 2009, they asked for a delay to repay $26 billion in debt. <laughs> Millennium Bridge Wobble When the Millennium Bridge in London first opened in 2000, the engineers responsible for the Millennium Bridge were startled to learn that as crowds of pedestrians crossed it, caused it to sever away and shake. Imagine the fear that must have been felt as their design appeared to crumble. It's thus been locally dubbed as the Wobbly Bridge, a far stretch from the name of the Millennium that was intended. Just two days after its grand opening, the bridge was shut down for two years thanks to that wobble until a full investigation and repair could be made. The engineers went on to explain that it's not an uncommon trade in bridges to sway, but there was a certain certain severity of this bridge that even the engineers couldn't deny had to be a design fault. The swaying bridge phenomenon has been documented as far back as 1873. Modern design has been significant in making strides in reducing the issue, so why their bridge didn't turn out as expected is a source of concern. Turns out, its design wasn't the cause, but instead because of a bizarre synchronicity between the bridge's lateral sway and the pedestrian's literal steps. In other words, the sway is completely unavoidable so long as people can walk across it. To clear matters up, Cornell University mathematicians had this to say of the problem, wobbling and synchrony are inseparable. They emerge together once the crowd reaches a critical size. It all comes down to how many people are on the bridge, where they're located, and their pacing. This ever-changing equation would be impossible to solve without a little wobble room. The bridge remains the same and still goes by the name of Wobbly Bridge. <laughs> Walkie Scorchy You can't believe something like this could ever happen, but this world manages to surprise us every day. You have to feel bad for the owner of the car. A 200 million euro London skyscraper started melting cars by accidentally refracting sunlight into powerful beams of intense heat. Think of the magnifying glass experiment to the extreme, and when humans are the size of ants, these things are dangerous. It melted that car as easy as it were a stick of butter. Just imagine what it could have done to a person. After reporting the incident, the building Building owners are forced to figure out a way to reduce the bouncing waves. The concave design angles the beams just right, and thanks to the mirrored glass keeps the inside cooler, but melts the city outside. It could have been a deadly combination. Let's just say it was lucky to have been a car and not a human. Dubbed the walkie-talkie building for apparent reasons, it has undergone a plethora of design improvements to rectify the situation, including improvements like shades and large plastic curtains that roll out during certain parts of the day to eliminate bouncing altogether. Humans will always learn best from their mistakes, an unfortunate truth of life. Tacoma Narrows A bridge is a quintessential civil structure. It also requires quite a bit of engineering when it comes to those large impasses. Humanities need to get from one place to another without getting wet or putting materials at risk in the water is as old as human history itself. It goes hand in hand with humanity, why the term bridge is used in so many languages. Its purpose is so widely understood. For many years, there was one force with which bridge engineers had the most trouble, gravity. In 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge opened to traffic between Tacoma 
Tacoma, Washington and the Kitsap Peninsula. It was a shining achievement. At the time, it was the third longest suspension bridge in the world. Financing was a major obstacle, which led to the state to pursue an innovative and cheaper design than what had already existed in the world. Rather than the originally proposed truss bridge idea, the Narrows would use two narrow plate girders to stiffen the deck and would also be what gives the bridge its iconic steel ribbon appearance across the Puget Sound. That analogy extended beyond its appearance. Even during construction, it was apparent that the bridge was too flexible, even under typical wind conditions. Construction workers gave it the nickname Galloping Gertie. Only four months after it opened, the bridge collapsed. Sometimes humans learn best from their mistakes. Unfortunately, those mistakes can lead to injury or even death of other humans. It's the worst kind of risk, with potentially a significant reward. For all the items on our list today, the risk outweighed the reward and many people paid the price for those mistakes. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to get all our content delivered right to your inbox.